escapism, or for being out of touch, or both. A New York Times editorial suggests the choice was to contain an investigation the White House long opposed. But Kissinger at least is an expert on the date September 11th. It was on that day in 1973 that the CIA assisted overthrow of the democratically elected government of Chile takes place, masterminded by Kissinger for Richard Nixon. President Salvador Allende is murdered. After a universal backlash, Kissinger backs off. Bush then names, it's 431 days now, Thomas Kane and Lee Hamilton as co-chairman. Kane's Azerbaijan oil connections and other conflicts of interest should make him ineligible from the outset. He earlier co-chairs the Homeland Security Project. Observers have noted that huge profits are to be made in the surveillance and security industries these days. The White House chooses all the commissioners. Lynn calls them key insiders rife with conflicts of interest. The White House brazenly appoints as the executive director one Dr. Philip Zelikow, a right-wing Republican hawk deeply involved in the Bush circle, a member of the Bush-Cheney transition team, and a National Security Council advisor with Condoleezza Rice under Bush 1. The Bush White House did everything in its power to derail an open inquiry. Then, when faced with its inevitability, the president and his aides sought to limit its scope, its access, and its funding. This commission was about as independent from White House control and manipulation as the abused prisoners at Abu Ghraib were from their jailers. The White House releases only 25% of 11,000 documents requested. It blacks out portions of the released documents, resists requests that the administration officials testify under oath, and tries to rush the commission's deadline. Bush and Cheney meet the commission. But it is behind closed doors. They refuse to testify under oath. No tape recorders are allowed. No transcript is allowed. Bush makes no opening statement, and those taking notes must submit them to security personnel. My administration will not talk about um, how we gather intelligence, if we gather intelligence, and what the intelligence says. I will not discuss. We will not discuss. Well, the simple fact is, Barry, that they didn't know where to go. The reason that they didn't know where to go was because a number of conflicting and overlapping uh, war game exercises were taking place, one of which uh, Northern Vigilance had pulled uh, a significant number of North American fighter aircraft uh, into Canada 
uh, and Western Alaska and, and Northern Alaska in a mock a Cold War hijack exercise. There was another drill, Vigilant Guardian, which was a, uh, a hijack exercise, a command post exercise, but it involved the insertion of false radar blips under radar screens in the Northeast Air Defense Sector. There was another exercise, Vigilant Warrior, which was in fact, according to a NORAD source, a live fly hijack drill being conducted at the same time. With only eight available fighter aircraft, and they have to be dispatched in pairs, they were dealing with as many as 22 possible hijacks on the day of 9-11, and they couldn't separate the war game exercises from the actual hijacks. All right, Boston Center, TMU, we have a, a problem here. We have a hijacked aircraft headed towards New York. We need someone to scramble some S-16s or something up there to help us out. Is this, is this real world or exercise? No, this is not an exercise manifest. But this was done deliberately, though. Uh, these uh, war game exercises were apparently very well planned by someone who I will show, I believe, was Dick Cheney in the United States government. Uh, to deliberately confuse FAA, NORAD, and U.S. Air Force fighter response to fulfill a prophecy that uh, another man had once said, let one happen and stop the rest. Uh, we do not have a clear expl explanation for why fighters from uh, uh, Andrews Air Force Base were sent out over the sea first and couldn't turn around because the 9-11 Commission seemed to change all the evidence uh, just arbitrarily right before it issued its final report. So we don't have a clear explanation, but certainly there, all, there, there was this all consistent uh, with a motive that said make sure that the fighters don't get to any place in time to stop the three critical attacks on the World Trade Center uh, and the Pentagon. Uh, do we want to think about uh, scrambling aircraft? Oh, God, I don't know. Uh, that's a decision somebody's going to have to make probably in the next 10 minutes. The American government consecrated its version of the events. From then on, any questioning of the official truth would be seen as sacrilege. Lemnitzer and the other chiefs knew there was only one option left that would ensure their war. They would have to trick the American public and world opinion. Lemnitzer comes up with Operation Northwoods. We could blow up a U.S. ship in Guantanamo Bay and blame Cuba casualty lists in U.S. newspapers would cause a helpful wave of national indignation. We could develop a communist Cuban terror campaign in the Miami area, in other Florida cities, and even in Washington. Create an exact duplicate for a civil registered aircraft. At a designated time, the duplicate would be loaded with selected passengers, all boarded under carefully prepared aliases. The objective is to provide irrevocable proof that the fault lies with Cuba. By manufacturing various pieces of evidence, 